Tamron 28 200, 2.8 to 5.6 is a hero of the day. What's up everybody, this is Jack Sputnik here and we're gonna talk in depth about new Tamron 28 to 200, 2.8 to 5.6. This is just awesome. And we got this choice now. So there are two like walk around zooms available for Sony. One is Sony 24, 200, and this is 3.5 to 6.3. This is 28 to 200, 2.8 to 5.6. So it's a little bit less when it comes to uh, wide angle uh, as, as a wide angle lens because like Sony obviously wins because it's 24 millimeters. This one goes only up to 28 millimeters. However, it's much brighter and it is lighter, which can be a, a nice feature because like I used Sony 24 to 200 for many years, but I gotta say this lens is, is a little bit heavy. This one, Tamron, is, is different. It's much lighter. Tamron is 575 grams. All of you guys from United States have to calculate it. Sorry, I didn't do it. And Sony is 780 grams. So it is heavier. And I have to say that when, when paired with, with uh, Sony body, it, it just feels better. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't feel this, this leaning toward the front. It's just well balanced set. I gotta say like out of the gate, straightforward that optically Tavron is just better. And um, yeah, we had a lot of time to, to take some, some cool pictures and we have our conclusions when it comes to um, optical quality. So first of all, one of the surprises, nice surprises is that this lens can actually work as a macro lens. So when you, when you have 28 millimeters set, you can go really close. And in this case, we were photo taking photos of Raspberry Pi. Huh? Interesting, huh? Uh, very delicious Raspberry Pi, by the way. And we could go as close that basically I made this, you know, lens hood dirty. <laughs> so I stick it into this Raspberry Pi. But having said that, you can take a look at the results. You can get real close-ups with this lens. And even if you switch to 200, you can, the, 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 focus, the distance, the distance you can get from the object you want to take photo of is pretty cool. And you can like really have this beautiful blurry background so you don't uh, know what's there. So you can focus on the subject. So this is cool feature to have that both on 200, you can come pretty close, but on 28, you can come very close to your subject and it can actually serve as kind of macro lens. So nice feature, good job, Tamron. And the other thing I noticed is, we, or maybe we tested, is vignetting. And obviously, as everybody can expect, when you go to 28 millimeters and you open this uh, lens wide to 2.8, vignetting is visible, but it's not crazy visible. You can take a look yourself as you close to f5.6 or f9, it pretty much disappears. When you were closer, like 50 millimeters, this vignetting becomes less and less. And what is interesting on 200 f uh, millimeters, it still works very good. And there's almost no vignetting. And one more thing, when it, when we are, as we are talking about 200 millimeters, uh, I just want to show you one video, a close-up of one of the skyscrapers in Warsaw. From 5.6, so the widest open you can go with 200 millimeters, up to f11, f16, this picture is sharp. And this is awesome because like, uh, as I remember 24 to 200 Sony lens, when you go to 200 millimeters, you can see that it's, it's not terrible, but you can see that the quality drops and the sharpness is not that good and you get some you know light leaks and here no light leaks sharpness is amazing it's awesome for 200 millimeters wide open take a look at that it's it's perfect and you can say of course that this was photographed or on a7 mark 4 a7r mark 4 so this is kind of a quality boost here but this lens is just optically very good from beginning 
to the end it's basically sharp two tests that i think everybody is waiting for is is 28 wide enough so we went to one of the central places when the, one of the central squares of warsaw to show you that you can really squeeze in a lot when using 28 millimeter lens many landscape photographers will say no this is not for me but having said that uh, there are other wide length, wider angle lenses in Tamron system for Sony E-mount that you can have in bag so you can kind of create your own set. Next and I think the most interesting part is uh, a bokeh test. I took some portraits for that reason and you can see 28 millimeters at 2.8. Uh, optically it works very good and at 2.8 you can get some blurry background. And this is important part because a lot of filmmakers will appreciate that. So having this universal zoom with you and having this option of, of you know, like um, switching it to 28 millimeters and opening to f2.8 gives you a nice opportunity to have some depth of field in video. But if you really want to get this beautiful separation of, of, of your object from the background, it's 200 millimeters f5.6 and the background gets really blurry as you can see at the picture right here. Okay, and finally the conclusions. Do I like this lens? Yes. What I, what I would say that the main sin of this lens, if I can say so, the main problem here is that it's not 24 to 200. I guess the main reason was to get this optical quality that Tamron achieved and optical quality of this lens is really good. Um, you know, like, for that kind of tool, this is totally enough, totally enough. And, and I am surprised and you get like extra feature that you can go, you can get some beautiful close-ups. You can treat it as kind of macro lens. Um, you also have very good build quality. It's lighter. It has this extra lock button here. So it prevents it from, you know, sliding down though. There's no problem with sliding down at all, but you just have it. Everything works pretty smooth, not pretty smooth, really smooth. So I was really satisfied with that tool as it is. So would I recommend it to everyone? Probably not. You have your niche, you have your specific type of photography or videography that you're doing and that you know the tools that are best. But if you're looking for something universal, definitely you should have a look at Tamron. And walking in the city center of Warsaw all day long with this guy was a real pleasure. We could take, as you can see right now, some cool architecture, architecture details, blah, blah, blah. We could also like take some cool food photography. We could take some, um, some portraits. So very satisfying and pleasant experience. So once again, guys, this is Jack Sputnik. Let me know if I didn't tell something about this lens that all the guys in our community should know if I skipped some parts or maybe you disagree with some of my conclusions here. And please don't forget to subscribe. I always forget where subscribe button is, so I show it with two fingers. So <laughs> please don't forget to subscribe. And I see you guys in the next episode.